God has been good to me. I've had people look at my life, including my mother, and uh, they have told me, that, Son, God has been good to you. And I already knew that. But the older I get, I realize how good God has been to me, and I hope that you are realizing how good God has been to you. Think about it. Just think about it for a minute. And it should move away the clouds from your mind, the doubt, the darkness, when you look back just a little bit and realize how God has been so good to you and how good God has been to you. God is good all of the time. Matthew Henry said, Light, they that pray in the family do well. They that pray and read the scriptures do better. But they that pray, read the scriptures, and sing do best of all. Amen, somebody. Dr. Matthew Henry always uh, comes with it. And that's a great quote to encourage family worship and not just church worship. That's good too. But church worship is better if the family has been worshiping all week long. And uh, family worship proves that uh, you're not just in it for a show because family worship is in the closet nobody knows about it but you and God and uh, and it makes uh, your Christianity real and if you do not mind join me in prayer Holy Father God we praise you and we thank you <coughs> Lord, for your holy word this morning, we thank you for the privilege and the power and the peace of prayer. We thank you for giving us a heart and mind, in our case, in this family, over 30 years of praying together each and every day. Uh, all of my children were prayed over while they were in the womb. They were in family devotions. All they know is that their father prayed with them since the time they were born. <clears throat> they heard the voice of their father praying for them even before they were born. And Lord, we thank you for giving us a heart and mind to do that. You deserve all of the glory, the praise, the honor, and the credit, and uh, all of the good that has been done is because of you. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you give every Christian family that legacy that the children saw the parents pray together from the time they were born. And uh, the family will be blessed if they would do that. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us. Help us to stop trying to be little mighty mites and uh, handle the stuff, this thing called life by ourselves. We can't, we need you, you made us, and uh, we, you have the rule book, you have the instructions for life, and so help us to take heed to what you have to say and to do life your way so that we can enjoy uh, the true blessings of life. It's sad so many people live and die, even some Christians, because they refuse to obey your holy word. They lose out on millions of blessings while on earth and uh, uh, will be missing out on some great rewards in heaven. It is so sad. So Lord, help us to live in an obedient fashion today. Help us to love right, to think right, to talk right, to do right, 
and to act right by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your Holy Word. And uh, as Matthew Henry said, help us to not only be a praying people and a reading people, but to be a singing people. Help us to sing old hymns throughout the day. To help us keep our hearts and minds stayed on you. Keep us, therefore, in perfect peace. And help us to pray without ceasing and to meditate on your word as well. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. And join me in reciting or reading the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Don't just say the words. Pay attention to the words and what they mean. This is some of the most powerful stuff on earth, if you believe it. In fact, don't say it if you don't believe it. If you're not a Christian and you're not ready to become a Christian and trust Christ as Savior, you don't need to say it. But if you are saved, this will remind you of what you believe. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of the same essence as the Father Emmanuel, God with us. Amen to somebody. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, he became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. You're not going to understand this if you're not born again, if you're not saved. But if you are saved, this even blesses your heart. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead. I said we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Can somebody say amen? I like that real good. You say, man, that's so old-fashioned. Man, how can you get excited about that? I can't explain it to you. There's some things in the Christian life, my beloved, if you're walking with the Lord, it's just best not to even try to explain it to people. They'll never understand it. There are things that God does for you and visions and things that God gives you to be better for you not to say anything about it because folks are not going to believe you. And then they think, they're going to think you're bragging. And we got too many Christians who 
do that. Everything that God does to you and for you, you don't have to tell everybody on Facebook. Amen, somebody. Because some folks are tired of you telling them about every blessing you get. It makes them envious and jealous. Uh, some things you ought not to shout from the rooftop. You ought to, uh, the gospel you need to shout from the rooftop. But every, every, I mean, the blessings that uh, when you're walking with God and you have been chastised by God and you've learned obedience uh, through the things you've suffered and you start walking in obedience and God uh, blesses you, the blessings come so fast and furious, if you will, that uh, you'll be on Facebook all day long telling uh, how God has blessed your soul and blessed your spirit. And some things are not even seen. <laughs> uh, the invisible God will do some invisible things to you that people don't even, they have no clue I'm talking about Christians don't have a clue what is going on with you and so it's just best for you to be quiet keep it between you and the Lord there are things that your, your, your spouse don't even y'all don't hear me uh, your marriage partner does not even know how you so joyful and so cheerful all the time and uh, hell is all around but you just have a peace that passes all understanding joy unspeakable all the time you are steady Freddy or you're steady Betty marching on holding of the blood-stained banner can somebody say man join us in reading the Holy Word of God our devotional passage uh, from the Holy Word of God, Psalm 47, and this morning just four verses. 47 verses 1 through 4. O oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. And Dr. Matthew Henry wrote regarding this passage in his fine commentary. If you don't have uh, that commentary, uh, get it. You can get it online now. Back in the day, I had to carry with me a big old Matthew Henry book this thick, and that was the uh, abridged version as I traveled around the world preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. But you don't have to do that now. You can just carry your iPhone. You can just pull it right up. Or your Samsung phone for those of you who, like one of my children, who does not like the iPhone. I went to buy her an iPhone. She said, Papa, I don't want an iPhone. I said, you don't want, you don't want an iPhone. What, what's, wrong, what's wrong with you? I want a Samsung. I said, Oh, a Samsung? Okay. Wow. Get yourself a Samsung then. The God with whom we have to do, he says, is a God of awful majesty. The universal and absolute sovereignty of a holy God would be too terrible for us even to think of were it not exercised by his son Jesus Christ from a mercy seat my mama but now it is only terrible to the workers of iniquity while his people express confidence and joy and uh, animate each other in serving him let sinners submit to his authority and accept his salvation 
Jesus Christ shall subdue the Gentiles. He shall bring them as sheep into the fold. Not for slaughter, but for preservation. He shall subdue their affections and make them a willing people in the day of his power. Join me in prayer as we pray together for governmental leaders, church leaders, media leaders, all the estates, and other people who are in trouble and who are having serious problems. Uh, you say, well, I don't feel like praying for all these people. That's okay. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you feel like it. You say, I don't feel anything when I'm praying for the, all of these people. That's okay. It's not about your feelings. We walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, God wants us to show our faith by our obedience. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty Holy Father God we pray for the president we are not here to criticize the president and talk down about the president we pray for the president as we prayed for the previous president and the one before that and we pray that you would save them if they're lost lead them guide them and direct them in the way that you want them to go we pray that you'll give them extraordinary wisdom knowledge understanding and insight as well as their staff we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, life blessings, and protection blessings for the entire family, including uh, we pray for Vice President Mike Pence and his family. Be still right here. Be still. We pray for First Lady Melania Trump. We pray for Second Lady Karen Pence. Uh, we pray for all presidential aides. We pray for the deputy director of the Office of Public Liaison, Stephen uh, Monasteri. We pray for the leaders of uh, all federal agencies. We pray these same blessings upon the Peace Corps director, Sheila Crowley. We pray for all state governors. We pray for New Mexico Governor Susanna Martinez. And we pray for all city mayors. And I think we're, we're making our second round of praying for all 50 governors. And uh, we, I just noticed that because I remember praying for her earlier. And we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to pray for these people. We pray for all city mayors. We pray for Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mayor Bill Peduto. We pray for all U.S. Senators, these same blessings. Today we pray for Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey Jr. And Holy Father God, we pray for all U.S. Representatives. Uh, we pray today for California Representative Anna Eshoo. And we pray uh, for salvation, spiritual, family, life, and protection blessings upon all police chiefs we pray for corpus christi texas police chief mike markle all sheriffs in the same way pinellas county florida sheriff bob guillotieri and holy father god we pray for all military leaders give them wisdom knowledge understanding and insight to deal with the threats that we're facing and all of our military men we pray and women and we pray for General John W. Raymond, 
uh, commander of Air Force Space Command. We pray for all law enforcement officials uh, across the country and around the globe. We also pray for leaders of nations around the world. Today we pray for Fiji's President George Conrote, uh, as well as Prime Minister Frank Bay Nima Rama. Uh, Frank Bay Nima Rama. And we pray that you would give them wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight, salvation, spiritual, family, life, protection, blessings to lead their country in the way that you want them to go. And Holy Father God, we pray for uh, all church leadership across the country and around the globe. We pray uh, for the leaders of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. We pray uh, for salvation, spiritual family, life blessings upon them. We pray that you would save those who are religious but lost, revive those who are saved uh, in their denomination. We pray for Bishop R Reginald T. Jackson, Bishop Samuel Lawrence Green Sr., and Bishop Julius Harrison McAllister. And Holy Father God, we pray for current events around the world and for the families of the two individuals killed in a natural gas explosion at a uh, Christian school in Indianapolis. The devil, uh, Lord, as you know, is busy. Um, we pray that you would comfort the families involved and give them uh, your grace and your strength and your comfort is only you can give through prayer and faith for these sorts of things are inexplicable uh, just like last week the uh, family of the two people killed uh, well the, the three people killed as they were going to uh, vacation Bible school going to a good place yet they were killed tragically these things are inexplicable and only you can explain them only you can comfort the people and so Holy Father God we also pray for the family of the two people killed in an emergency plane landing on a beach in Portugal uh, how is it this is another inexplicable thing how is it that a plane can be flying out of the sky and landing on a beach and you're at the beach having fun here comes a plane and uh, lands on you so Lord we pray that you'll comfort those people and help them to understand uh, as only you can we pray for the families of the 29 people killed and the dozens injured in a bombing at a mosque in Afghanistan we pray for Nashville Mayor Megan Barry and her family as they mourn uh, the death of her son, of their son, and their only son. We, they got him through high school, they got him through college, and then the drugs took him. And Lord, there's an epidemic of drug problems. We thank you for. Uh, Dr. Tony Evans being on point and writing a book to address this problem. People are addicted to stuff because they're not addicted to you. They don't know you. So people are going trying to constantly get a high when they can go higher than they've ever gone before. They would trust you, trust you as Savior and tr love you back and fear you and obey you and be faithful to you. Uh, they will be on a permanent high as those of us who are truly saved know and so we pray that uh, your Holy Spirit would loose them and let them go and trust your Savior from the addictions across this country wiping out thousands of families and leaving children orphans in the car
because people are falling out sitting in the car because of drugs and so Holy Father God we pray also for the peace of Jerusalem we pray based upon your holy word Psalm 122 6 uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem they shall prosper that love thee we pray for the persecuted Christians around the world and uh, Holy Father God comfort them as only you can give them grace and strength in their trying hours and in their dying hours we also pray for the media CBS News correspondent Mo, Mo Rocca Coenca Charlie Rose uh, and correspondent Tracy Smith Lord have your Holy Spirit to not give them rest until they come to know your Savior and uh, help them to do that which is right uh, in the media and Holy Father God we pray now for the prayer requests that have been sent in to us this one came in yesterday and there's a one or two more that came in yesterday that's not on the list here this morning I uh, believe we pray for Katerina please improve and bless and lead in her relationship with D strengthen their love and give them wisdom in their behavior toward each other and Lord we all know about that period and that time right before marriage and how fraught with danger and temptation it is so give them your grace and help them to do the right thing make them a strong Christian couple and help them to get married soon we pray for Bruno uh, please uh, be with all Christians who are being persecuted by the outside world who are not denying their faith in Christ increase and renew our faith each and every day we pray for Sandley please be with her and save her and her loved ones protect her from harm we pray for Tanya for her neighbor to stop harassing her provide her with affordable housing and we pray for Betty give her hope after the death of her husband and her son help her to wait on you and trust in you provide for her needs we pray for Brenda for the healing of a drug addiction for protection and guidance for her 25 year old daughter who is pregnant we pray for Rachel for blessing and protection to be upon their church and ministry as well as her and uh, her uh, husband as they strive to minister and we pray for all pastors and their uh, families who are going through a difficult time uh, brought on by the devil brought on by uh, life in general brought on by themselves whatever the case might be give them your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit uh, to march through it holding up the blood-stained banner that others may see Christ uh, in their lives and in the gospel so that they can be saved we pray for Sylvia give her strength amid her mother's terminal illness and heal those who are sick and save those who are lost to revive those who are saved we pray for mark deliver Christians being persecuted by Isis in Iraq and Syria and Lord God in heaven we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for VJ for blessings upon his ministry and now we pray for the people who have trusted your Savior through this ministry we pray for Abyssabar Nancy Batutu Ezra Douglas John and Joel help these to grow in the faith and be the Christians that you want them to be help us to be the disciples the concerned disciples of the disciples and help us to be good disciples as well and Holy Father God we pray for the people who have recommitted their lives to 
uh, Jesus Christ and uh, through this ministry help these to grow in the faith to stand strong in the faith and to never go back uh, into the world but to stand strong for you we pray for Endor we pray for the sources we pray for Jerry we pray for Imran we pray for Beatrice we pray for Chase, Tracy and we pray for VJ help these to stand strong in the faith and help us to encourage them to do so in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake Amen our devotional reading today beloved is titled the compelling purpose of God the compelling purpose of God by Oswald Chambers The Bible reads in this devotional in Luke 18:31 the Bible says he said unto them behold we are going up to Jerusalem Jerusalem in the life of our Lord represents the place where he reached the culmination of his father's will Jesus said I do not seek my own will but the will of the father who sent me seeking to do the will of the father was the one dominating concern throughout our Lord's life and whatever he encountered along the way whether joy or sorrow success and I cannot say the next phrase because he I, I don't believe Jesus was ever a failure but <clears throat> that's what he says he was never deterred shall we say he had obstacles there were obstacles in the way I put it that way with all of the obstacles that came his way because as the old folks used to say and I'm adding this Jesus can do anything but fail he was never deterred from that purpose God's purpose he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem Jesus was on point and one of the things that I noticed about Jesus and I told people repeatedly as I preached through the book of John every day for over 365 days that Jesus was on the move he did not have time to waste he did not waste one minute Lattergagging around, he was on the move. He was a man on a mission. And D. A. Carson, as he was speaking uh, about what is the gospel, uh, once said that uh, when he was talking to Nicodemus, that. Uh, Jesus was so on point he kept bringing Nicodemus back to the truth to the point that uh, and he these are his words that uh, Jesus Jesus was rather abrupt borderline rude and I I, I know what he's saying I, I, I can't fix my mouth to say that myself but uh, uh, I, I will say this he did not have time for foolishness amen somebody and, and and Jesus got to the point in a hurry and kept you on point 
Nicodemus would try to uh, teach and rule of Israel would try to say something and Jesus would right back to hey <laughs> you must be born again anyway back to the text this morning the greatest thing for us to remember is that we go up to Jerusalem to fulfill God's purpose not our own amen somebody God's purpose in the natural life our ambitions are our own but in the Christian life we have no goals of our own we talk so much today about our decisions for Christ our determination to be strong Christians and our decisions for this and that but in the New Testament the only aspect that is brought out is the compelling purpose of God you did not choose me but I chose you Jesus said we are not taken into a conscious agreement with God's purpose we are taken into God's purpose with no awareness of it at all we have no idea what God's goal may be as we continue his purpose becomes even more and more vague oftentimes God's aim appears to have missed the mark because we are too nearsighted to see the target at which he is aiming at the beginning of the Christian life we have our own ideas don't we and we did as to what God's purpose is or oh, we talked much about that when we first got saved we say God means for me to go over there and God has called me to do this special work uh, we do what we think is right and yet the compelling purpose of God remains upon us the work we do is of no account when compared with the compelling purpose of God it is simply the scaffolding surrounding his work and his plan he took the twelve aside God takes us aside all of the time we have not yet understood all there is to know of the compelling purpose of God to be continued let's pray Holy Father God help us to understand your compelling purpose give us wisdom and foresight and insight grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit uh, to understand your compelling purpose and help us to stay on point with your purpose and not ours in Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake amen now beloved if you have happened upon us this morning from somewhere in the world as we're heard in every nation by the grace of God and you happened upon us and you listened and you didn't understand everything but you can appreciate some things but you have never trusted Christ as your Savior in other words if you were to die today you would go to hell and you would not go to heaven if you don't have the assurance that you would go to heaven you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you need to understand that you are a sinner as is the rest of us everybody in the world is a sinner from the Pope on down and so therefore we have offended God greatly and uh, and so uh, God in his mercy and grace sent his only begotten son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins he made our salvation 
possible and uh, all we have to do is believe on Christ and Jesus Christ delivered this message called by some the gospel in a nutshell for God so loved the world that includes you that he gave his only begotten son his name is Jesus Christ that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life the Bible also says in Romans 10 9 and 13 that if thou you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead thou you shall be saved for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved all you have to do dear friend is to get out of your sin trouble and your sin debt and your sin problem which leads you to hell is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus Christ shed his holy and precious blood for your sins as the sacrificial lamb to take away your sins and the sins of the world all you have to do is believe on him pray and ask him to save you and he will save you and I'll be glad to lead you in what is called the sinner's prayer repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart Holy Father God I acknowledge that I am a sinner that I am a sinful person and that I have repeatedly sinned against you now Lord I don't think I'm as bad as others however uh, I know that one of my sins is gluttony and uh, I know that another sin of mine is uh, purloining I steal pens and paper from the job and and so Lord I have never murdered anybody but I understand that if I don't trust Christ as Savior I will go to the same hell as someone who killed somebody so for Jesus Christ's sake please forgive me of my sins my failures and my faults as I now believe with all of my heart in the Savior of the world Jesus Christ who died for my sins was buried and rose again Lord Jesus please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life in Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake Amen now dear friend of mine if you just trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you just prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart I declare to you that based upon the Word of God in the Bible you are now saved from sin and hell and you're on your way uh, to heaven welcome to the family of God I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life and that is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior it is the beginning of everything for you and a and certainly a changed life for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet what to do after you enter through the door Jesus Christ said in John 10 9 I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture until next time my beloved may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer